Today we're going to go ahead and continue with our Activity 1.7, our Game Time app. We're going to go ahead and look at how we can use global variables in order to program both the score as well as our timer. Now the term global in the initialize block means that the variable is available for use in all event handler blocks in the program. This is called the scope of a variable. There are cases where variables are created inside a specific block and therefore are referred to as local variables because they are not available to the rest of the program. We're only going to be using global variables in this activity. Now, when we go in and take a look at our score, what we want to really have happen is we want to initialize our global score variable to have a value of zero. So as the game starts, our score is set to zero. And every time that white blood cell sprite collides with the germ sprite, we should increment or increase that global score by one. So let's go ahead and take a look at our MIT App Inventor and how we can program our score variable. Once you are an MIT App Inventor, there's a few things we need to note before moving on to that block view. The first thing is when we uploaded our AIA file, we were given this score label at the top of our screen. That score label is going to be used in order to update whatever our global variable is equal to. So even though we go ahead and initialize a global variable, and we could even go ahead and increment or decrement it depending on the situation, we need to find a way to visually see what the value of that variable is. This is where we use the score label to increment or decrement as well. So basically we're going to create this variable and whatever that variable is, we're then going to display it using that score label. Let's go ahead and take a look at our block view and how we can go ahead and initialize that score variable and set it to zero. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and initialize this score variable. In order to do this, I like to go up to the top of my blocks and place all of my global variables above the rest of the code. We're gonna go into our variable drawer. And from here, the first thing we need to do is initialize this global name too. So we're gonna bring that guy in and we're gonna replace the word name with score. So now we're creating a global variable called score. The next step is to give this an initial value. And our initial value for our score is going to be set to zero. So once that game starts or we reset the game, we want that score to always go back to zero. It basically declares the variable score and then initializes that value to zero. Once we initialize it, the next step is to go ahead and set that score to increment by one. In order to do this, we're going to go back into the variable drawer and we're going to grab this set block. Now that we have this set block, we can grab this little drop down and we should see our global score appear. We're going to set the global score to increment by one. So in order to increment, we're going to go to the math drawer and bring in a plus or an addition block. From here, we're going to go ahead and get whatever the global score currently is and increment or add one to it. We're going to go ahead and get that variable and the variable that we want to get is the global score and we're going to go ahead and add one to it so from the math drawer you're going to grab that zero and just change it to a one so now wherever we take this block and place it in our code it's going to set the global score to get whatever the global score is and add one to it so in this instance if our global score is zero we would add one to zero and we would get the value of one if our global score was set to eight we would then set the global score to get the global score, which would be eight and add one to that. And from there, we would get our new value of nine. So make sure that you change that zero over to the one so that we can increment that by one. Now, the next step is to place this in the correct block. So remember, we want to get our score to increment only when the germ sprite collides with the white blood cell sprite. So we're going to take this set block and we're going to need to place that in the collide with event handler. Now this is going to go down below and it's going to go outside of the if statement. So make sure that that set global score is outside of the if statement. So when our germ sprite collides with, we're going to set the germ sprite heading to 360 degrees minus the current heading. And then we're going to go ahead and increment that variable by one. Now, as mentioned before, our variable is going to increment, but we're not going to actually see this in our designer view or our view layer. We need to update the score by changing the value of the label. 
So again, this label is going to remain at score to zero, even though our global variable is incrementing. In order to get that label to change, we're going to need to go ahead and set that label down below. So anytime you update a variable, especially something like score or a timer, you always want to make sure that you can visually see those changes as well. So in order to do this, we're going to go to that block view and we're going to find our score label. From that score label, we're going to want to go ahead and set the score label text. We're going to take that score label text and drop it down below our global variable. And we're going to change what the text actually is. In this case, we're going to set the score to get whatever the variable is. In order to do this, we're going to join a couple blocks together. So we're going to go under the text block and we're going to grab this join block. And we're going to drop it to the end of our set score label to text. The first thing we're going to do is grab a blank text box and we're going to put in the value of score. So type in score colon and then a space. So the word score will appear and that's basically going to replace this whole score to zero. So if we were to go and just place that there, we wouldn't even see the zero anymore. We would only see the word score. We want to see after score, whatever the global score is. So we're going to go back up to our variable. We're going to get the variable or whatever that current variable is and set that to global score. In this case, what's happening now is we are incrementing the global score by one and is then displaying what the score actually is. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens once we open up that app companion. Now that we're in our companion app, Let's take a look at the score and how it's currently set to zero. Now, before when we hit the start button and our germ sprite bounced around the screen, even though it would collide with the actual white blood cell sprite, the score didn't update. So let's see what happens when we hit the start button and our germ sprite collides with the white blood cell sprite. As you notice, the score should be incrementing every time that the two collide. Now, once it go ahead and ends and hits that bottom edge, we should be able to hit reset and set that score back to zero. But you'll notice that once we hit reset, we've already gone ahead and positioned our germ sprite in the correct location. We changed our canvas to be the correct background, but our score didn't update or reset back to zero. So we need to go ahead and add just a few more blocks of code here in order to get it to go back to zero. So let's go back into our MIT app inventor. And once we are in those block views here, what we're going to go ahead and take a look at is that reset button. So we're going to need to go ahead and reset our score back to its original state. In order to do this, we're going to go ahead and just simply duplicate this set global score to get your global score. And we're going to do a little minor modification here. We no longer need to go ahead and change or add or increment one to this value. We're just going to go ahead and set the global score back to zero. Once we do that, we can go ahead and delete the remaining bits of that code. Now, remember, just because we update the global score does not mean that we've actually gone ahead and displayed that on our companion or on our tablet. So we're going to need to go ahead and drop that into that reset button. And then we're going to need to go ahead and update the score label as well, just like we did with the collide with. So we're going to go ahead and take that set score label text, right click and duplicate that as well. And in this case, we don't even need the join button. All we really need to do is take that score. And after the score, we're just going to go ahead and place the number zero after it. Go ahead and click on join and delete those blocks and update that score label by placing it under the set global score to zero. So now if we go ahead and take a look back at that companion app. What we should notice is when we go ahead and hit reset now, not only will it go back to its original state, but my score should also update to zero. So now you've learned how to go ahead and program your score. It's time to look at how to program our timer using a global variable. The only piece of code that is still missing is the timer functionality. You need another variable for the timer, which will start out at 10 seconds and decrease every second until it becomes zero. When it becomes zero, the player should win the game. The flowchart below shows you what you need to do in order to program your timer. The first thing we're going to need to do is initialize that global variable to time left and set that value to 10. 
Once your variable is initialized, the next step is to program the clock component. Now your clock component should decrement by one every 1000 milliseconds and update the timer label as well. Once you reach zero on the clock, you should see a message that says you win. If the sound button is checked, you should hear the play win sound file. We will also need to make sure that our clock stops so that it doesn't continue to count down. Let's go ahead and open our MIT App Inventor and take a look at how to program our timer. Before we go ahead and start programming our block view, what we need to look at is our non-visible component, which is our clock. So from our user interface, we're gonna go ahead and find the clock under components and go ahead and click on it. From here, we're gonna notice that in our properties window, we have time always fires, timer is enabled, and the time interval is set to 1000 milliseconds or one second. What this basically means is that every 1000 milliseconds, our clock is going to fire. If we have this decrementing by one, every 1000 milliseconds, that timer should drop by one, counting from 10 to nine and so on and so forth. What we wanna make sure of is that our clock doesn't start before we are ready or before we click on that start button. So we're gonna to need to go into that properties window and we're gonna click on that timer enabled and make sure that it is unchecked. That will allow us to set that timer or enable that timer from our start button rather than when the app initializes. Now we're ready to go ahead and jump into the programming side of this. So let's click on our block view. We're now gonna to need to go ahead and initialize our time left variable. So in order to do this, we're gonna to go to the variable drawer. We're gonna grab that initialize global name. And instead of putting a zero after it, like we did with the score, we're gonna go ahead and grab the zero and change that from 10. We're gonna have this variable count down rather than increment. Before we move on, we need to change that name to time left. And now you've initialized a second variable in your program. Now, once we've initialized that, we are gonna to need to program the clock component to actually do the counting down. But before we do that, we need a way to start that timer. And that timer should be started when that start button is clicked. So we're gonna to go to that clock component on the left-hand side. And from that clock component, we're gonna look for the dark green block that says timer enabled. Once we find that set clock timer enabled, we're gonna use a little Boolean logic here to turn that on. We can do that by going up to our logic drawer and we're gonna find that true block. Bring that true block in and drop it in. Now, once we go ahead and hit that start button, we're gonna to need to go ahead and trigger that event or that clock to begin. So now that we're ready to go ahead and start that timer, we need to take a look at our clock component. So for our clock component, we're gonna to need to go into that left-hand side and we're gonna find the clock. From here, what we're gonna look for is the clock one timer event handler. We're gonna go ahead and drop that up here in the upper right-hand corner, give us a little bit of room here. And now we're ready to program what happens with that clock. The first thing we need to do is to get that clock to count down or that variable to decrement. So in order to do that, just like we did with our global score down below here, we're gonna to go to our variables, we're gonna set our variable, and now you should see two variables in that dropdown. We're gonna select the time left, and now we're gonna go up to our math drawer, and instead of adding one, we're gonna go ahead and subtract one from this. So again, go back to that math drawer, we can bring in the number zero, and from here, we're just gonna go ahead and change that to the number one. Now we have setting our global time left. We need to get whatever the time is and subtract one from that. So just like before, we are now decrementing how much time is left in our program. In order for us to see what's going on, we need to change that label that is in our user interface. So the label that we're gonna be using for this is going to be that timer label. We're gonna set the timer labels text. Now, when we set that timer label text, we're gonna go back up to that join button. We'll go back up to text and grab another blank text box. And we are gonna go ahead and type in timer with a colon, then a space. And we wanna drop in whatever the current time left is. So we'll grab another get block 
and change that over to time left. Now that we have our variable and our label set, it's now time to look at the conditional part of this. Let's jump over to look at our companion app quickly and see what happens. When I hit start, what should start to happen here is that time should start to count down. So as you can see, my timer is now counting down. But what happens once that time gets to the number zero? It should stop. And in this case, you can see that it's not. That timer is just going to continually count down even after the game has ended. If we hit the reset button, notice that it set that timer down to a negative 12. It's still counting down. So we need a way to fix what is going on with the actual timer. And that's going to come in the form of a conditional statement. So we're going to grab this if then block and we need to put a condition in there. So we'll go into our math drawer, grab an equal sign. And what we're going to look for is if the value of the time left. So I'm going to get that current value of time left. If global time left is equal to and we want to go ahead and put the number zero in there because once that time hits zero, then we want to go ahead and basically turn that time off. So how do we actually go ahead and do that? First thing we want to do is go to that clock timer again on the left hand side and we're going to go ahead and disable my clock. So we're going to scroll down just like we did before. We're going to set that clock timer enabled. But instead of setting it to true this time, we're going to go ahead and set this to false. So that's basically going to turn the clock off. Now, the next thing we want to do is to make sure that it doesn't surpass that number zero because everything is happening so fast is we're going to go to our variables and we're going to tell our value to change or to stay at a specific number. So we're going to set the global time left and we're going to go ahead and set that global time to be zero. So once your global time left hits zero, we're going to make sure it stays at the number zero by setting it to zero and we're going to turn that clock off. So that should take care of some of the issues that you are having. However, there's still a couple other things we need to have happen here. One, we noticed that our germ sprite kept moving about the screen. So we need to make sure that that germ sprite can't move. And just as we did before, we're just going to go into the germ sprite. We're going to find that germ sprite speed. And we're just going to tell him to basically stop. So we'll set our germ sprite speed here. And we're going to go ahead and set him to zero as well. Now, once we do that, one of the things in our flow chart said that we need to be able to see the UN PNG file. So just as we did when that bottom edge was reached, we went ahead and added this set canvas one background image to game over. I'm going to duplicate that and bring that into my clock component. Now, instead of having the game over PNG, what we want to look at here is we want this you win PNG file to appear. So we're just going to go ahead and replace that game over with you win. Now, what should happen is if we get to that 10 seconds, we should be able to go ahead and get that win image to pop up and our timer should hopefully start to function correctly. Now, as you notice, if we go back in here, my clock is still counting down. I still have no way of resetting that clock. So we need to go back into that reset button in order to get this back to its original state. So let's go back and take a look at our reset button. And let's see what we can actually add here that's going to help us to get it back to that original starting point. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we need to set not only the global time left, just as we did here with our global score, we can actually duplicate this. And I'm just going to go ahead and set that score again. But instead of score, we're going to select time left and we're going to change that zero to 10. Now that we've gone ahead and changed the time left, I also need to change that label. So I'm going to duplicate that score label. And instead of being score, we're going to replace that with the timer label. And instead of it saying score zero, we're going to need to say timer colon space 10. 
So we wanna set that back to 10 now. Now, the other thing we wanna also make sure of is when we hit that reset button, we wanna also make sure that that clock is turned off. Just in case we don't get to the number zero, I'm gonna set that clock. So I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna bring that back into the reset button as well. Now that should take care of whatever is going on with our issues. The only other addition that we wanna add here is to do with the sound. So what do we wanna actually have happen here with our sound is we wanna check that if that checkbox has been checked. So just as we did here in our germ sprite collide, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that whole if then statement. Now with this if then statement, it's checking if the sound checkbox is checked, set the sound source to the collision wave. Well, in this case, we don't want the collision wave. In this case, we wanna look under the media and we're gonna use this win wave file. So I'm gonna go in here and instead of collision, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that front part and we're gonna type in win. From here, we're gonna go ahead and place that if statement inside of the other if then. So again, we have a conditional within a conditional. So let's go ahead and check to see if we have addressed all of the needs of our program. First thing I'm gonna do is reset and you're gonna notice that the score is set to zero and my timer is set to 10. When I hit start, the clock should start counting down and my score will increment if we are able to defend that bottom edge. So here you can see the timer is going down. My score is going up. And if we can get to that number zero there, we should see that win PNG appear. So what we didn't see yet is that win PNG file appear. So what is going to happen here? We have a score of five, the timer is set to zero, my germ sprite stopped, everything looked good. But if you notice, if we go into this UN PNG, one little typo in there can really affect what is being called. So here I need to make sure that if I address this, I go ahead and put my period before the file extension, and that should take care of my issue. So now you've addressed about 99% of the issues within your app. For the next part of this assignment, we're going to look at a few housekeeping challenges to wrap up our game time app.